Okay, looking at a different type and style of engine, this is a Detroit diesel 6V71 engine, which means it's a V-configurated engine, not like the I6 that we looked at, but it's a V-configurated engine with 71 cubic inches per hole. Now, it's also a two-stroke engine that uses a roots blower that runs off of the rear gear train of the engine to force feed the engine. The I6 engine that we looked at in a previous video actually used a turbocharger to create charge air so that the engine can perform correctly. This one uses two strokes in application, so everything happens quicker. So this engine uses the root blow, roots blower to actually get enough air volume into the engine to allow it to run typically with two strokes. So we're going to run this engine and we're going to look at some of the systems on the engine and the operation of the valve train as we continue on through this video. So this is the roots blower and the roots blower again coupled to the rear gear train of the engine actually creates the charge air needed to run this particular two-stroke Detroit engine. Okay so looking at the underside of the roots blower so on the top side is where the air comes in and then these veins when it's coupled through the gear train of the rear of the engine actually rotate compressing the air and jamming it down into the engine into the air box. So this is how we actually get our charge air on this particular two-stroke diesel engine. Okay so now we're going to take a look at the roots blower that we just seen and it's connected again to the rear gear train so our veins are turning in here and forcing air down into the engine. So on the front of this we actually have a mechanism which is called the governor. The governor controls what's called the rack in this particular engine. Now this engine being two-stroke uses what's called an MUI injection system. We talked about the Cummins engine, the I6, using a pressure time system. Completely different type and style of delivery for that particular engine. So this one uses an MUI and the MUI stands for mechanical unit injectors. So those injectors are controlled mechanically by the movement of the rack based on the speed of the engine to control the overall maximum RPM. So we're going to take a look underneath the valve cover and I'll talk about some components under here and then we're going to run it and look at the functional operation of the rack and the MUI system. So these are really easy for access, couple spin-off fasteners and then we can just see inside the engine. So here we have the rack being controlled by the governor and it moves the control that allows the injectors to deliver a certain volume of fuel based on RPM. So when we do the functional run on this thing, you can see how this controls, it, it moves and controls the delivery of the fuel. So we have fuel supply and return lines per injector. We have the rocker arm assembly that controls the exhaust valves. There are no intake valves in this engine. The intake valve in this engine is actually the piston and when it moves by a port that's what allows the air from the blower to force itself into the cylinder. Okay so when we start up a Detroit diesel engine, I've seen lots of stuff on the internet where guys are starting these two-stroke engines for the first time after years of sitting around a barn or in their backyard or whatever the case may be and they run away and the term runaway means is that we have no control of the fuel or the RPM in the engine and what will eventually happen is the engine will continually make power, it will continually deliver fuel, continually deliver air and run higher and higher and higher in RPM until it could potentially have a catastrophic failure where a piston comes out the side of the block or it locks up. It's a very dangerous thing and a lot of times people don't know how to correctly shut these down. So this particular engine has a couple safeguards in place for running here at the college and manual controls that typically would be on the chassis. And we're going to have a closer look at that here in just a moment. But you can see behind me I have a fire extinguisher and I'm going to show you here momentarily how to properly shut an engine off by using a CO2 uh, fire extinguisher which allows the engine to be started back up after the repair that caused the runaway to be fixed. If you were to take a dry powder fire extinguisher and dump it into a running engine, 
you could have just as much of a catastrophic failure because now the engine may lock instantaneously at a higher than normal RPM and something still could come apart or we could have internal damage. Now when we use a CO2 fire extinguisher, we can correct that problem, we can start it right back up, which I'm going to demonstrate for you, and then it's done safely and we're not putting anything into the engine that we have to take apart and fix. All we have to do is fix the problem that caused the runaway and then we go from there. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and start this engine up. Okay, so I've been able to manually shut this thing down with the control that I have here at hand. So we're going to start it back up with the valve cover off and we're going to take a look at the function of this and then I'll demonstrate how to shut it off in the event that we do have a runaway. Okay, took, taking a look at what could potentially happen is when I've taken this cover off, I've removed the clip here that controls the rack. So if this pin was aged and it had a fallen off or maybe somebody didn't put it in or forgot about it watch what happens when I take the clip out it goes to full fuel which means if the cover is on and it's in the chassis and you can't access access it as quickly as I have here then this engine would run away and you would have absolutely no control over the rack and it's gone right to full fuel so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna put the clip back in and then put our wire back in place on this particular one to lock it out so that it does not fall out during operation. So when I run this engine, what I want us to take a look at is when I bring the RPM up, the rack will move delivering the volume of fuel at the MUI, the mechanical unit injector, and then based on the maximum speed set in the governor, it'll back it off so that it does not over rev. If the governor is set too high, and the buffer screw is set too high, that'll cause the engine to over rev. Now, for performance, some guys tend to tune these with a little bit more rack movement, increasing the engine RPM up to maybe in excess of 3,000 RPMs. Now, being a two-stroke, it seems like they are running excessively high to begin with, but this particular engine is running only at about 2,500 RPMs. Okay, so in the event of a runaway on this particular style of engine, here at the college we've actually got a cap cover that goes over top of the intake. We also have the flap valve that covers the intake, so it actually depletes the oxygen. The other thing that we're going to do, and I'm going to demonstrate this here for you in a moment, is taking a CO2 fire extinguisher, and when we discharge it right into the intake, and this works on turbocharged engines, gasoline engines, supercharged engines, any internal combustion engine will snuff out the air and stop the engine almost instantaneously. And then we can start it right back up and I will go through the demonstration with you here in just a moment. So taking a look at the air flap valve that is actually on top of the blower, this can either be connected with a solenoid or a mechanical apparatus that the driver would use in the event the engine needed to be shut down in the event of an emergency or a typical normal shutdown. So how this gets reset, and again it would be done with a solenoid, I'm going to move that, I'm going to open the valve and you can hear that valve opening and closing. So it's open and I lock it. Now if I needed to in the event of a runaway or a normal shutdown, I can just pull on this and it closes off the intake with a plate. So I'm going to set the flap valve into the open position and then I'm going to start the engine and see how it responds for cutting off the air during operation. It's not as instantaneous as I'd like but it still shuts the engine down.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start this up. I'm going to run it about part throttle, and then I'm going to deplete the oxygen by using a CO2 fire extinguisher. So, we'll remove the snow, and it should start right back up. So that's how you properly shut down a runaway diesel engine in the event that you have a fuel system problem. Be safe.